الرحمن الرحيم um, My dear students, I hope that you are all doing well This is lecture 11 uh, This lecture introduces the, um, the differences between phonetics and phonology um, Actually these differences cannot be uh, covered within um, such a limited time for this lecture but this is only an introduction we have the basic differences and they are presented in a very simple way so phonetics is a branch of linguistics that studies the sounds of human speech the sounds of human speech and when we say the sounds of human speech it means that it's general general so to study the sounds of human speech that as that is not related to any particular language it's a general one it's a general account of the uh, of the sounds humans can produce it is concerned with the physical properties the physical properties of speech sounds what are these physical properties? Their production, their physical characteristics, their perception, and their neurological status. Basically, in our books, phonetics and phonology, pronunciation, we are much concerned with the production of these speech sounds. I mean their pronunciation and their acoustic features okay this is simply what is meant by phonetics it is the study of the actual production and perception of human speech it is something practical it is something practical Okay, it's not okay, it is practical. While phonology, on the other hand, is specific and theoretical at the same time. Specific, that is the opposite of general. Theoretical, it is the opposite of the actual or the practical side of phonetics. So what is phonology? Phonology is a branch of linguistics that deals with the systematic organization of sounds in spoken languages. We are not here concerned with how sounds are produced, how sounds are perceived, but rather with how sounds can be systematically arranged to be or to form bigger uh, structures, components, if you like. So we are no longer interested in the sound itself. We are interested with blocks that are above the sound. Above the sound. It covers aspects above the level of segments. That's why this is sometimes called segmental and this is called suprasegmental. This is segmental while this one is called supra segmental i don't know whether the word supra is mentioned somewhere here i'm going to write it here supra segmental okay so these are interested in elements that are called phonemes or segments while this is or phonology is interested with things that are above the segments just like the syllable the feet the tone intonation rhythm and and, and etc okay th they are mentioned here syllables such as syllables tones intonation etc it's concerned with how phonemes 
function in the language and the relationship among different phonemes okay so we are more interested in phonology in what in the combination of phonemes the arrangement of phonemes okay um, it deals with the abstract side the abstract side or the theoretical side while this is interested in the practical side of the sounds of a particular language again this is a specific when we say particular language it's no longer general it's no longer general phonetics is general while phonology is uh, particular it is related to one language abstract practical physical properties uh, sy systematic organizations this is simply uh, an account of the basic uh, differences between phonetics and phonology one of the things that are dealt with under the title phonology is phonemes sequences or phoneme sequences it's better and syllable structure and syllable structure how can phonemes sequence or follow each other in what way is this free i mean can we arrange any string of phonemes and say okay this is a word or this is a syllable no actually the process of sequencing phonemes one after the other it's not a freely uh, process there are rules so we cannot arrange sounds one after the other freely it's not free it's not free we rather have certain restrictions or if you like rules that is sequencing sounds is not random it's not random but rather controlled by rules these rules are either universal or language specific so to start with the question can we arrange sounds one after the other freely no it's not a free process so what do we do we should pay attention to certain rules certain restrictions these restrictions are either universal just like this one or language specific rules so what do you what do we mean by universal rules and language specific rules let's start with universal rules universal rules are the rules that apply to all languages it applies to all languages such as for example the rule that requires the existence of a vowel in the syllable this rule which says there should be a vowel in each and every syllable this is a universal rule that should be taken account of in any syllabification process so whenever we syllabify any word in any language we should look for the vowel and then we say that okay here we have a syllable again this is a universal rule that applies to all languages in the world maybe as far as i can tell to uh, so many languages and this rule is just like the rule that says the existence of a vowel in a syllable is uh, is compulsory is obligatory so based on this rule what do we understand if there is no vowel there is no syllable if there is no vowel there is no syllable the number of vowels decides the number of syllables in the word so if we have one vowel it means that we have one syllable if we have two vowels two syllables three vowels three syllables etc almost all languages need a vowel to be the nucleus or the heart of the syllable so as if you can think of it as a human being um which or of uh, this that human being does not have a heart for example or the heart is absent is not working what's what will happen that human being will die okay it's the same idea 
when we have a syllable, sorry, we have a vowel, we have a syllable. If the vowel is not there, there is no life in the syllable. The, the, the syllable is, is going to be non-existent. Okay, so the number of vowels decides the number of syllables. Almost all languages need a vowel to the, in their syllables to be the qalb al-syllable, nawat al-syllable we call it. This is an example of a universal rule. What about language-specific rules? Language-specific rules are the rules that apply to one language but do not, do not necessarily apply to other not syllables, to other languages, okay? So this type of rule is called specific, language specific, which means that it works in one language, but it doesn't work in another language, not necessary. While this universal rule is the rule that works uh, uh, um, on all languages. That's why it's called universal. Language specific rules they work in English, but they don't work in Arabic, for example. We have another rule, which is language specific. It works in French, but it doesn't work in uh, Italian language. Okay? So let's have an example about this. The idea of consonant sequences. Consonant sequences. Languages show different structures and frequencies of consonant clusters. That is, languages differ in the nature and patterns of consonant sequences in, the, in their languages or uh, in, their, in their system. Okay? Some languages allow consonant sequences with various structures and in different positions, while some others do not. Okay? Let's continue. While some others do not allow or highly restrict or highly restrict the structure and frequency of uh, consonant clusters. Okay, so some languages allow, allow consonant sequences with various structures and in different positions, while some others do not allow, do not allow, or highly restrict, highly restrict, okay? Now let's have an example. In English, for example, Concerning consonant sequences, we have rules. English permits consonant sequences initially, medially, and finally. So we have frequent consonant clusters in initial position, in medial position, and final position. Sometimes we talk about initial and final only. English may have up to three consonants under the onset position on condition that the first of the three is the sound se. So this is a rule. The rule says we have up to three consonants under the onset position, provided that the first one is se. This rule is applicable to English, but it does not apply to Arabic. That's why we call it a language-specific rule, because it, it applies in English, but it doesn't apply to other languages, for example, Arabic. Now look at this word street here we have three consonants at the beginning three consonants at the beginning uh, it's okay with English because we have a rule that says we have up to three consonants while under the coda it is in final position we may have up to four consonants under the coda like in the word sixths and texts Okay, the question is, do all languages show the same structure? No. Or at the same positions? No. This is why we call these rules language specific, because they are specific to English. 
but they do not work in Arabic. On the other hand, we have certain uh, rules in, in, in Arabic concerning consonant clusters. One of these rules says that initial consonant sequences are not permissible in English, in Arabic, sorry. So we cannot have two consonants, one after the other in Arabic. When we say Arabic, we talk about standard Arabic. We do not talk about spoken uh, uh, accents of Arabic. Okay? لذلك, um, uh, consonant sequences in هم التقاء السواكن الأصوات الصحيحة There are always rules that um, that, are, that apply when two consonants come one after the other. بالعربي نقول عنه للتقاء الساكنين غيرنا كذا كذا ليش حولنا إلى كذا للتقاء الساكنين حتى ما يلتقي ساكنين So it's almost not possible especially when we talk about the initial position. But in final position, we can have clusters of two consonants, maximally, يعني, uh, uh, up to two, we cannot have three, four, five, are permissible. And in these cases, most of the time, these are identical, identical uh, consonants, like... For example, um, 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 we can say uh, saf. Okay, this word saf is uh, is ended with two consonants, which are identical, which are identical it means class. Okay, this is possible in Arabic, but to have two consonants at the beginning of a word in Arabic is not acceptable. Now, suprasegmental phonology also deals with stress, intonation, and rhythm, and all these will be dealt with in details in later chapters. Now, I want you to give me examples on language-specific rules. Um, you may refer to English and Arabic if you like. What are other language specific rules that you know uh, about uh, the the, the uh, phonology of, of Arabic or the phonology of English. Okay, uh, thank you very much for listening. Sure, we are going to discuss this lecture in the Google Meet. Good luck. Assalamu alaikum.